I have a model that represents a generic business process. Let's suppose this model represents making widgets. We've got inputs, specifications for the widget, energy, and uh, raw materials. At the other side, we get some desired results. We get widgets that meet our specifications, and we also get some waste. There's always waste. Energy that gets turned to heat. Uh, some of the parts get uh, clipped off and thrown away. And some of the products don't meet specifications. And we seek higher productivity by reducing waste. Now, imagine that this process represents a human interaction process. The inputs now are the intentions of the people who come together, the energy they bring to it, the information they share. We talked about some desired results, but to a great degree, we're getting the undesired results we just talked about, waste. If we measured what percentage of the inputs is going out as waste, I believe we find that the waste is unacceptable. It's enormous, and we can change it. Now, I can imagine that some intelligent people would be skeptical that we can change it, because they haven't ever seen it work any differently. However, there is a lot of evidence, a lot of experience, that shows that we can change how human beings interact in a business setting. We can't do it, though, the way we've tried to. We can't do it by a corporate edict. We can't do it by stating corporate values and expecting people to suddenly absorb a new way of acting. We can't do it by running everybody through a two-day communication workshop and assuming they now are experts at communication. How we do it is we teach people to teach other people to create a new kind of space to interact, to create new space for conversations. For example, when I facilitate a process improvement workshop, I'm creating a space that brings people together in a new kind of conversation. They get to spend quality time with colleagues that they never get to spend quality time with. That's the first thing. They get to move away from the daily disruptions of the business and have time to listen and think clearly. They have an opportunity to say what they're most concerned about, honestly and without fear of negative consequences. And in this kind of space, people go through some discomfort and some internal chaos, but invariably, breakthroughs in performance result. Virtually every client over the last 25 years where I have led one of these workshops has said at some point, this is about the most effective problem-solving experience I've ever had. That's because the space was there for the people to come together and interact in a more effective way. A simpler example that I've been using lately has to do with conference calls. More and more of us work with far-flung teams around the world. We're on conference calls with people in different time zones. We don't know if they're paying attention. We don't know if they muted the phone and walked away. There's not a great sense of teamwork. So my colleagues and I have developed a simple set of tools, principles, for running these conference calls and turning them into very powerful, effective conversations. The people who try these techniques tell me that the hardest step is the first one. The hardest step is to ask permission to try a different way. And they're blown away by the answer. People say, yeah, anything would be better than this. As one person said, I expected resistance, but the door slammed open in my face. <laughs> it's a simple proof that people can experience for themselves, that they can create a different kind of human interaction with less waste. And uh, I've been working with a group in this very room where I'm speaking today, where we've been practicing some simple principles for making every meeting a powerful conversation. We simply remind ourselves of eight simple principles that this meeting matters, and that we will be cognizant and conscious of some basic principles of how we want to interact. And we find that that changes our meetings every time. And this is a tool that's available to all of us. These are simple tools. So I'll conclude now by saying human interactions lie at the core of our business processes. They're not outside of the processes. They are the processes. If we want to improve better results faster, cheaper, let's look at this great source of waste and opportunity. Some people, people don't tell me that they think that these are soft skills. What they tell me is, yeah, Stuart, but I think the people around me will think that this is soft. Well, 
that doesn't happen. When we work with people on these issues, nobody thinks it's a soft skill. They think this is the hard stuff, and they want to master it. And they realize there's nothing academic and fanciful and soft about learning how to work with other people to accomplish what you want to do. It's what we all want. So I, I leave you with a question. What interactions in your business aren't working as well as you'd like them to? What are you contributing to that situation? What conversation could you start today with somebody you're uncomfortable talking with and create a space for your own mini performance breakthrough? I'm Stuart Malcolm Scott, and I'm looking forward to our next powerful conversation.